Okay, everybody, thanks for joining us once again here on the channel. This is part two in the series of our journey with Prusa in their i3 MK3S Plus. Today, we're going to go over installing Octoprint, which allows you to wirelessly monitor your printing and control your printing and um, expand your capabilities with technology with your Prusa printer. So uh, we'll get right to this. All right, so the main component here is the Raspberry Pi, and uh, I've chosen the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, 4 gig kit. Um, there are other options on other videos where you can do the zero and you can mount it right there on the control board, but I have been using the 4B with my Creality Ender 3v2 and I'm happy with it. It performs well, it stays cool, and I have more options of uh, you know ports, USB, everything. There's just more options with that and I didn't really want to tie into the main control board because this is a new printer and I just feel better with this thing off on its own. However, I will put links to this whole kit um, from Amazon in the description and it came with the uh, 4b power supply switched which is nice some heat sinks a fan another usb cable but we have one from Prusa anyway and then a case now what i've chosen to do here is to print out this case which fits a different heat sink and fan setup which i've got coming uh, but this just mounts right up here on uh, the Prusa itself, which is really nice and clean and back out of the way. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. And I will have links to uh, the files uh, to print this case out. Okay, so now some of you are going to question because I'm sure you've been all over YouTube and seen the videos where people are installing the Raspberry Pi Zeros inside the Incy Rambo case here, the controller. Um, yes, you can do that. It's a lot cleaner because you don't have any extra box, you know, out here, out, you know, in your way. But, um, you know, it's just another option. It depends on what you really want to do. I mean, if you want to do the zero, you can. Just be careful with heat and temperature. And, you know, it's a little more complicated because you have to solder. You can get kits pre-soldered, but you can do that route. But in my case, I've chosen to go with the larger Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. So we've covered that, and hopefully that will answer your questions so you don't have to put them in the comments section. This kit that I bought on Amazon, where the link is below, um, the Raspberry Pi... For Model B takes a SD card, a micro SD. Here you can see it came with the package. And so you're going to need an adapter like this, or they also provided an adapter, a USB adapter that you can use like this one here. So if you have a, another USB port, you can use this, or you can use this style of adapter. So here is the, uh, on the Prusa site under the prints, this is the actual case that I printed out. And I'll put a link down there in the description for this. And then um, it uh, is designed to use a different heat sink and fan. And I'll show you that on Amazon. There's a link down in the description for that as well. This is the kit that I ordered, and I gotta say right now, all this stuff is, is way overpriced due to uh, the supply chain problems we're just experiencing right now, but uh, this is the one that I purchased, and then also there is another part that you will need. It's this Raspberry Pi 4 embedded heat sink with fan, and the case that I showed you previously uh, specifically fits this item so that's why I chose to go that route but uh, 
they apparently work well together. This is the webcam that I'll be using. This is a very popular item with uh, 3D printing community. It's the Logitech C920. You can get a cheaper camera, but this one's got really good resolution, so this is the one that I chose. I'd like to point out that, uh, as I said before, one of the advantages of the Prusa uh, equipment is that they're highly supported and everything is in their website all in one place. And so, as you can see here in the Prusa Knowledge Base site, they've got a section in here on configuring and installing Octoprint. So I would probably have this up in the background if you're watching this video, just to, um, you know, give yourself some printed information to follow along with. It'll help you out a little bit. On your computer, you're going to want to navigate to the raspberrypi.com website, where you will find the Raspberry Pi Imager, which is going to put the image, the operating system basically, onto your SD card. And so just select whatever version you need here and click on download and it will start the download process. Once you have the Raspberry Pi Imager opened, installed and opened on your computer, uh, make sure you've got your SD card loaded into your computer Click on Choose OS, and then scroll down. You can see there's a bunch of options there. Scroll down to Other Specific Purpose OS, and you'll see Octopi right there, and we're going to go ahead and select that. Now this is where some of you more advanced users can choose another version, but uh, for the standard one, we're going to pick the Octopi Stable as our choice. So now you're going to be back at this look on your computer screen. You're going to select Shift plus Control and X for advanced options. So now under the advanced options, you're going to set your host name. Now in this case, I've used Raspberry Pi underscore two because I have another Raspberry Pi on my network running my Creality Ender 3 V2. So you wanna have those two separate names. So that's the name that's gonna show up on your Wi-Fi network so that you can easily identify uh, what it is. And you're going to enable SSH use password that authentication. Um, you're going to have to select a Pi password. And so what most people do, you don't have to, but I've selected just Raspberry. Uh, make sure you spell it right. And then, uh, or you can use whatever password you want. And then you're going to click on configure Wi-Fi, enter the name of your Wi-Fi network, and then the password for your Wi-Fi network that you require on your router to access. Also, you're going to want to put in your country, which in our case is the United States, US. If you're in Great Britain, it would be GB. And uh, any other countries, you need to look that up and find out which one it is. Okay, once you're done filling out that information, just click on Save. And then you're going to be here, select Choose Storage. There's our SD card. And if you have more than one selected, just make sure you pick the right one. In our case, it's a 64 gig. And so I know that's the one that we have. And one thing to note is that you can change a lot of these settings later by locating a file inside your uh, Octopi directory called octopi-wpa-supplicant.txt and it would be on the SD card. So you can go in there and manually change it, but that's advanced. So if you wanted to change your Wi-Fi password and network later, you could. So we're gonna go ahead and select the SD card. So we've got this set, stable SD card. We're gonna click write and that will perform the writing process. Existing data will be erased. 
click yes, and here we go. All right, so the Raspberry Pi imager has done its job and it has given us this message that it's completed. We'll click continue. Now, since I don't have the heat sink that I showed you earlier available that I want to use with this case, I'm going to go ahead and put the fan on here and you can kind of see on the connection here. So we've got it on, this is actually pin four and pin six. So this side is even numbers, the other side is odd numbers. So this would be pin two and then four and then six and you want the red wire on pin number four as you can see here that I've plugged it in like that okay and then normally you'd have a heat sink on the processor or the chip but uh, for now just for setup today we're going to skip that part and just throw the fan in there so it has some kind of airflow Here's a little schematic off of uh, Raspberry Pi's website that kind of shows you the connection there on pin four and pin six. So now we've removed the micro SD card from the computer and we're going to place it into the Raspberry Pi's micro SD slot. Just kind of pushes right in there like that. All right, so we've got the power cord connected, the switch is on, and the light is on, the fan is running. And so this thing is going to try to connect with our network, our home network, using the login and password information that we've assigned to it on the card. So in there, you can see a little red light. You can see a little green light occasionally flashing. The green light is when it's transmitting, communicating with your router, trying to connect to Wi-Fi. So for this part, you're gonna to have to know your router's homepage. And in my case, it's 10.0.0.1. Log into your router, and then you can look and see what devices are connected. All right, so scrolling down through the connected devices, we found the Raspberry Pi 2, and there is the IP address right here, 10.0.0.196. So now if we go to our browser, we should be able to find that. Now, depending on which router, what Wi-Fi service you have, you're, you're going to have to look up that information on your own. If you don't have, this is uh, Xfinity Comcast. But back there, when we looked at the devices and you saw the Raspberry Pi 2, it was assigned as a DHCP, which means that the configuration, the connection IP address will change every time it connects. So we want to assign this thing a reserved IP. It automatically auto-populated the 196, and then we're going to click Save so that it's going to save that information. All right, so I have highlighted the IP address. Now you can see that I've got it reserved, and I've highlighted it, copied it, and then I put it in the address up here. I clicked enter, and here we go. There's Octoprint. This shows us that the Raspberry Pi is connected to our Wi-Fi, and the Octoprint is installed on this Raspberry Pi device. On the printer, we're gonna click the black button, scroll down to settings, and then find RPI port. I'm gonna make sure that's off. If we're not using the RPI port that's inside the box on the printer, which in which case you'd be installing the Raspberry Pi Zero series, 
we're not doing that. So I'm going to have RPI port off because we're going to be plugging into the USB port in this case. Here we have the USB cable that came with the printer plugged into the printer on one end and into the Raspberry Pi on the other end. You got to this point, you've done really well. That means that you're actually connected to the internet or to your Wi-Fi network at least. And you can begin the Octoprint wizard to set up your uh, configuration with your Prusa. And we just run through the wizard, put in your username and preferred password. Okay, you get through a couple of pages which aren't really that critical and then you get to uh, set up your printer profile which is critical give it whatever name you're going to give it model number or model name and then the print and build volume all right so now we do the print and build volume which is rectangular lower left heated bed and then the print volume is 250 210 and 210. All right, so we've clicked finish and we have serial port auto, baud rate auto, printer profile is Prusa because we're using two different Raspberry Pis, one for the Prusa, one for the Ender 3 V2. So I've got two different links up here at the top on different IP addresses. Yes, you can run two printers on one Raspberry Pi, but that's not part of this video. And I have not done it, so I can't comment. Okay, so now there's a whole bunch of other settings that you can get to by clicking on the little wrench icon. You can also add a lot of plugins, which I'm not gonna go over here. That's, there's a ton of videos out there for that. But uh, one thing I do wanna show you, which is kind of important, is the printer profile. You can edit that to change the settings that you've already added and make sure you've got the right nozzle diameter. If you switch nozzles, you'll need to do that. And then temperatures, Octoprint has its own idea of what temperature should be listed here, but the G-code is going to direct that anyway. But for PLA with the Prusa, I'm gonna go 210. Sometimes they say 215, but um, I am going to go with 210. All right, we do not have the camera set up yet. That's part of another section, but uh, we have connected to the printer and we can see here all the files that is on the card that's plugged into the, the printer right now. So that tells us it's communicating. If you want to do a little test and move your axes up or down, I selected 10, that's a nice safe small number. We'll click that. And it moved. Click it again and we'll see it move again. There it goes. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the webcam setup. And as I said before, I've chosen the Logitech C920 HD Pro. Right now it's on sale on Amazon. I don't know if it will be by the time you look at this video, but I'll leave a link in the description below. And um, so that's the one we're gonna choose. And if you go over to uh, octoprint.org, they have a list of USB webcams known to work with their software. And when we look up our model here, um, there's several variations, but basically what we wanna look at, at these settings right here. The R dash R nineteen twenty by ten eighty, and then the frames per second is thirty. So those are some common numbers that you're seeing here, and you're going to need to know that number. So I would leave this open when you go to set up your camera in the editing section of the files that are on your SD card. Now, if you do choose a different camera, like uh, you get one that's a little bit less expensive or whatever, you can see there are several options if we scroll around, all sorts of different ones from different manufacturers. 
with notes on if they worked, if they didn't work, what you had to do to get them to work, and etc. Now, uh, a little over a year ago when I did install the Pi for the Ender 3 V2, we used a program called Putty, and it worked fine, but we have since then decided that what you need to download on your computer is Notepad++. It's a lot more user-friendly, and you can get in there and edit stuff real quick. Having said that, do not use any text editing programs that come on your computer like Notepad or WordPad. They will destroy the file. All right, so here you can see I've taken the micro SD card out of the Raspberry Pi and put it into the computer now. So this is uh, File Explorer. We're looking at all the files that uh, the Raspberry Pi program put on this when it loaded Octoprint. And you can see all the files there. These are the two we're looking at, WPA Supplicant and OctopiNetwork.txt. Pay attention to those. So once you've finished downloading Notepad++ and it's installed on your computer, you want to open the octopi.txt file right there. I've already opened it, so I'm going to click out of this. And here is the file. And if you look down a little ways, you see camera USB options line, and you see there's a little hash mark there, hashtag. We're going to delete that because when there's a hashtag in front of it, that means that that option is disabled. So we're going to delete the hashtag and that makes that line enabled. So here you can see that they've got a default resolution set in there. We have a camera that's a lot better than that. And so if you look over here at the C920 list, um, pretty much what they've what they're using here is the 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. Right click, copy it. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to highlight the defaulted one and paste that. Now, if you have any other camera with different uh, specifications, then you can go ahead and add those or that information into this area that I just showed you. Like if you have a 4K camera, it's going to be like 4,000 by whatever. Now, another thing to remember also is that I'm using a USB camera that plugs into the Raspberry Pi 4. If you're using the raspy camera, the Raspberry Pi camera itself that plugs into the camera port on the Raspberry Pi, you are not going to use these settings and this this setup does not apply to you. It's a totally different deal. So if that's what you're doing, you need to look at a different video because I do not have a video on that. Having said that, I do not like the Raspberry Pi camera as much as I like the USB cameras. They're a little bit more limited. Okay, so the last thing you're gonna do is you're going to uncomment, which means deleting the hashtag in front of the camera, HTTP web root, and then also delete the next one as well. And that activates those lines. The next thing you're going to do is delete the dash octopi. In addition, you're going to delete the dash n. It's not needed in this case with this camera. All right, so you're all done with that. The editing, just click on save and you're good. Okay, so we've ejected the micro SD card and placed it back into the Raspberry Pi, and we'll hook up the camera next. 
Today we got the heat sink with the built-in fan for the Raspberry Pi and um, we're going to install that. Now if you're not using this particular case then you don't need to uh, worry about this heat sink and the kit that I bought can, comes with a Raspberry Pi 4 case anyway so if you don't want to mount it like I'm planning on doing it here then you know you can just set it down off the side here like I did with the Creality Ender 3. But in our case, we're going to mount this whole thing on the side of the Prusa with this heat sink built in. We also got the C920 Logitech webcam. The uh, processor and the RAM require the most cooling and the kit that I bought comes with these little heat sinks that just peel and stick onto these surfaces here and here and then there's a couple smaller ones as well. Now this other kit that um, I'm using that goes with this particular case, you can see the fan is pretty small, a lot smaller than the one that came with the kit and that's what I'm using. And in this case um, they've got these little pads here that contact the processor and the RAM and they give you a uh, thermal tape here that you'll cut to that size and place it on there before you put this heat sink pad on. So now as you can see I've cut the thermal tape and it's double sided sticky so I've placed that both on the contact pads that go on to the uh, heat sink, uh, I mean the uh, processor and the RAM. And then we just place this right onto the unit like that. And then we're going to reattach this fan onto the number four and six. So there you can see we've got the fan plugged back into the number four and six pins. And this is seated down properly. Okay, pretty much done here. We've got the mount set up here on the frame of the Prusa and it's running good. Now remember with the Pi 4 or 3 you're going to have more wires coming out because it's not mounted directly into the control box so yes there is more wiring but I feel better about having this separately so I can monitor the temperature and everything a little bit better. I have more webcam options this way so once again, this heat sink is optional. You don't have to do it this route, but that particular case fits this heat sink. Okay, so now we're in Octoprint and you can see that it is connected, it's operational. I've done a few more plugins here that I really like. Um, the dashboard is one of them and all of these are available on the uh, plugins manager, but uh, there's quite a few nice ones and there's a bunch of other YouTube videos out there that that walk you through other plugins that you might want. But my main concern today is that we got Octoprint loaded, we got the camera working, and we're good to go for printing and you know watching this monitoring process remotely. Now in Octoprint, when we go up here and click the little wrench symbol, we come over to Octoprint settings. And then we go down here to camera settings. And this is where we're gonna turn off the autofocus on our webcam. Uh, let's put an item on the bed so we can focus it manually. One thing I wanna talk about is temperature on your processor. Now, with this particular plugin, um, it's called Resource Monitor. That's a good one to have. That way you can watch the temperature of your Raspberry Pi. Right now it's at 42.8, which is not bad. And before we had it in that case with that smaller fan, we were around 36. So that was good too. So we're, we're still good on our temperature, which is something that I wanted to know for sure. So now here in camera settings, you can see we've got quite a few choices. Uh, first of all, uh, I wanted to show you that it does recognize the HD Pro webcam C920. So the Octoprint does recognize the camera. It's communicating over the USB. And uh, we've got the frequency correct. All this stuff came up automatically. 
and you could change the exposure if you want depending on the lighting setup that you have around your printer and what we want to do is disable focus auto because there are complaints with people using these webcams that say that the autofocus goes in and out and it gets blurry so we want to disable that which i just did and then we can manually uh, focus using these different settings here also uh, white balance auto you may or may not want to keep that kind of depends you'll have to kind of see what some of your videos look like and decide whether you want it to be an auto as well so here you can see I've moved the box that's on the bed a little bit closer to the camera and I've pushed the focus absolute up to 155. Now watch what happens when I move the box further away. So now you can see that the box is blurry when it's out further on the other edge of the bed. So we're going to move this in a bit and it's starting to come into focus a little bit more. So that's about where we want it, right around 55 or 60, depending on the camera you have. But I'm just trying to show you that you have options to focus this thing perfectly. And also, one last thing, don't forget to follow the links below in the description for the camera, the printable items that we've got here, and also the board and everything else that I showed you. There's Amazon links, Thingiverse links, Prusa links, everything you need for resources down below. Thanks again. All right, so that's about it uh, with the Octoprint and the camera setup. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank you for watching the video and joining us here. Probably some thoughts ahead of time is I'll probably move this back with a different style of mount because I think it's too close to the bed. I need a little bit wider angle view. And um, if I do a aftermarket lighting setup, I might have to move this mount as well. But for now, this looks pretty good. And thanks for joining us. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, tips for me, for everybody else, please leave them in the comment section. And please subscribe. I need subscribers. I do not have a thousand yet, and that's the magic number. So. Anyway, come back and we'll do another series on the Prusa when we do another upgrade. Thanks for watching part two. Thanks. Bye.